very, very good morning to you, my good Facebook and or YouTube friends. I am reporting here actually from the beautiful Spray Lakes area in Canmore, Alberta, where it's an absolutely glorious and beautiful morning here. I had to come out because it was just so awesome. Beautiful, beautiful day. So I uh, wanted to share with you, I've been sharing a lot on the times of restoration of all things. And I wanted to share something specific that uh, that I hadn't touched on. I, it's something that I've studied at length and that I've been recently discovering is the notion of how to put it in the words of uh, Apostle Fazal Malik, and he told me that when you get your tithing in order, 90% of your spiritual warfare is over. And I'm discovering that. It's, it's a really, really powerful tool. But I was one who had a very, very difficult time understanding. Now, not that I didn't want to give, not that I wanted to <clears throat> support the work of the church, uh, very much so. Uh, that's a passion for me. But <clears throat> the reality was, is I thought I was kind of doing it all by grace. I thought it was, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, it is. But I thought tithing was a new, uh, rather an old covenant principle. And I thought tithing was kind of done away with, with the law. And that really we're not, we're not under the law. We're not... Uh, Sin, it says in Romans uh, 6, I believe it is, that <coughs> um, 14, 18, some, somewhere around there, that sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So if I'm not under the law, and I'm under grace, then why are you trying to bring me back to the law and telling me I must tithe again? And that was the difficulty that I was having. What I wasn't realizing is tithing didn't start with the law. Tithing started with Abraham. 430 years before the law. Before Moses came, Abraham was tithing 430 years before that. And he was tithing to this peculiar individual that we read about in uh, in Rome in uh, Hebrews 7 as well, that uh, this one who had neither uh, beginning of days nor end of life, he's described as, being like uh, made like the Son of God. And I believe this Melchizedek was the first representation of Christ, <clears throat> his, his first appearance, if you will, uh, to Abraham. And that's why this great Abraham, the father of our faith, is given a tithe to this guy, who also consequently is referred to in Hebrews 7 as king of righteousness and king king of peace. Now, if Jesus is the prince of peace, who's the king of peace? So, definitely some points to ponder. So, I believe that Abraham was tithing to Jesus, and that's who we tithe to. So, when we're tithing, we're not doing it under the law. No. Just like Abraham did it before the law was even created. But when we recognize that, as it says in Hebrews chapter 7, that, there, that here, Speaking of on earth, here men receive tithes, but there he receives them. So when we're tithing, friend, we're not giving to men. We're not, it, I mean, it benefits the church. Don't get me wrong. But when we tithe, we are tithing, we are honoring and giving our tithes there to King Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> and you know what? When you get Jesus on your financial side and Jesus on top of your finances and Jesus in your financial corner. Whoo. Well, it says that the angel of the Lord of the armies of heaven goes to war on your behalf. Now there's a lot of people who don't like Donald Trump. These people are particularly, particularly disturbed when they think of Donald Trump as being what is referred to as the commander-in-chief, large and in charge, Donald Trump. That means he's not answerable or accountable as commander-in-chief to anybody. He's the charge. He's the final. He is not accountable to anything or anyone. He is the commander-in-chief. When it comes to all military operation around the world, 
That's directed from the United States. It's directed from the commander in chief. And he's accountable to nobody. That bothers them. But I think it's even more bothersome to think of the fact that we have a Lord. A lot of people like to recognize Jesus as their personal savior. I did this for years. In fact, I referred to him, I thought it was one term. Well, he's my Lord and savior. There are two, there are two terms, folks. He's your savior. Yes, he saves you from your sin. And he also saves you salvation. The word sozo has so much more implication than just eternal life in the sweet by and by. It's talking about restoring your health, restoring your finances, restoring your relationships, uh, restoring your peace of mind. <coughs> That's a much bigger picture. And that's what Jesus is, as our Savior. But as our Lord, He's our Commander-in-Chief. And when you honor your Commander-in-Chief with your tithe, and you say, you're my Commander-in-Chief, and I know you have my financial affairs in order, you have my finances in order, you have my relationships in order, you have my health in order. Well, I just shared a quick little testimony here recently. Uh, well, I've shared parts of this testimony with lots of different people, but I've just discovered I cannot afford not to be tithing. And so I made a radical decision to tithe, as my pastor encouraged me, to tithe not on what I'm earning today. Tithe on what I am anticipating and believing for in the future. I did, I started that not even a month ago. Well, I guess it's, yeah, beginning of March. I've discovered healing. I got a rotator cuff injury that was healed, uh, healed of gallstones. The whole gallbladder was removed. I've had spiritual healing from a root of condemnation in my life. I've had relationships healed. I've had financial abundance poured out uh, through financial transactions, um, one of which I'm, I'm warring against right now. But I've already got my lawyer involved in this one, a, a builder. I bought a couple of condos here, one builder. Uh, after giving them all of my money, uh, including uh, everything, like full payment, full payment, not, not a percentage. The builder got full payment and I was actually down picking out my appliances. I paid for an upgrade on the appliances and now they told me, uh, yeah, they don't want to sell to you anymore. We signed off on all the documents, went and sat down with the lawyer, signed off on all the paperwork. Now they've said, oh, they've decided they don't want to sell to you. So uh, come pick up your money. <laughs> Pardon me doesn't work that way. doesn't work that way. So my lawyer is attending to this one right now. I let her know last night. And uh, I'll let you know the results of this one. But I can pretty much already tell you the results of this one. I get my house. And they lose. Because I'm a tither. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, uh, Lord of Restoration is at work. It is the time of restoration of all things. And Satan will rue the day he decided that he was going to mess with the church. I got an encouragement, though. According to Proverbs, it says, Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his own soul, when, uh, if he be hungry. But yet even that, that, that thief himself, even if he be found, he shall be required to repay sevenfold even the entire substance of his house. So I just want to encourage you. Start laying claim to what has been stolen from you. you got a lot to come back to you. And if even one in every seven Christians were to lay charge against Satan, we'd bankrupt them. So why don't you be one of the seven and join me?